At sa araw pong ito, ang ating pong mapapakinggang sermon ay sermon na hinanda po ng ating mahal na Reverend Nolly Malubuyo na siyang missionary pastor ng URCNA at na ginamit ng ating Panginoon upang may tatagang CCRC. At itong sermon na ating pong marinig ay naipahayag na rin po niya noong 2001 doon sa Uh, Big Spring Community Church uh, na kung saan doon po siya nagpapastor. Uh, itong sermon na ating mapapakinggan ay ikapapat na bahagi na po ng ating teaching series na uh, pinagbubulay-bulayan natin mula sa Book of Romans. Ito po ay binubo ng 21 sermon parts. So, bago po tayo mag-aral o mag-bulay-bulay ng salita ng Diyos, tayo muna po ay dumulog sa Panginoon at humingi ng tulong at manalangin. Samahan niyo po akong manalangin. O Lord, you have given us your word for a light to shine upon our path. Grant us to meditate on that word and to follow its teaching that we may find in it the light that shines more and more until the perfect day. Father God, let the words of your servant's mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. All this merciful, Father, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Magandang umaga po muli sa inyong lahat, mga mahal kong kapatid sa CCRC. Good morning. Yeah. Noong 2019, uh, about five years ago, Martin Sampson, with P yung Sampson niya, maaaring ang ilan sa inyo ay kilala siya, he is a well-known music writer or singer or worship leader nitong isang megachurch hillsong. Sinabi niya sa isang Instagram niya how he was feeling about his belief. Inaddress niya ito for about 1,000 or 5,000 followers na meron siya dun sa social media site with a picture yung character ni Samson. Kasi ang apelido niya, Samson. He said, and I quote, Time for some real talk. I genuinely losing my faith. And it doesn't bother me. End quote. Samson lists a number of questions that he is battling with. At sinabi niya na muli, and I quote, Why is the Bible full of contradiction? No one talks about it. How can God be loving yet send 4 billion people to a place all because they don't believe? No one talks about it. Christians can be the most judgmental people on the planet. They can also be some of the most beautiful and loving people. But it's not for me. End quote. Itong mga katanungang po itong, why is the Bible full of contradiction? How can a loving God send people to hell? Why are Christians are so judgmental? Ito po yung mga ilan sa mga common complaints or arguments against the Bible, against Christianity, at against doon sa mga Kristiyano rin po. Kaya nga, ngayong umaga pong ito, we will consider yung dalawang question na sinabi niyang, why does God send people to hell? And yung pangalawa, why are Christians are so judgmental? Kung matatandaan po natin nung nakaraang linggo, natapos natin yung Romans chapter 1. Kaya chapter 2 na po tayo magsisimula. Where in si Apostle Paul, diniklara niya doon that all mankind, so ang lahat ng sangkatawan, knows that there is a creator. Because of all the creation, he sees around it. Nakikita po natin lahat yun. Gayunpaman, dahil sa kanilang ungodliness, sa kanilang unrighteousness, itong mga unbelievers rejects in their minds and in their hearts this knowledge of truth. Sa halip, they exchange yung truth na ito for the lie that there is no God. 
At dahil dito, ang Panginoon has revealed His wrath against them. Kaya nga, dun sa chapter 1 na pinag-aralan natin for the past three weeks, tatlong beses sinabi ni Paul dun sa chapter 1 that God gave them up. Dun sa verse 24, verse 26, at verse 28 ng chapter 1, God gave them up to their ungodly and unrighteous passion. At ang ibig sabihin po nito, it is God who withholds, no? At restrain yung power of the Holy Spirit over their lives. Kaya binigay sila ng Diyos sa kanilang depravity o yung total depravity ng katauhan na ito. At, at pagkatapos po, at nagbigay naman si Paul ng isang mga halimbawa uh, na kung saan ang ano ang kahinatnan ng kawalan ng pananampalatayang ito. Mga examples na sinasabi niya, which is dun sa last topic natin, is very unpopular sa ating culture. Recently na lang naging exposed ang may ito. Kagaya halimbawa ng mga women having unnatural sexual relationship with women. Gayun din ang mga men having unnatural sexual relationship with men. During 70s, 80s, it's not very natural or tagong-tago ito. At hindi lamang ginagawa nila ito ng mga taong ito, itong mga di makajos na gawain. In fact, they also promote it everywhere and even force others to do the same. Kaya nga, dun sa first chapter, si Paul kinundem niya itong mga Gentiles, yung mga non-Jews, who do not believe in Christ. And we can imagine itong mga Hudyo na ito, nang mababasa nila yung chapter 1, natatangutangu sila sa kanilang mga ulo, saying in their minds, yes, God condemns Gentiles, but not me. I am a Jew, a circumcised child of Abraham, a member of God's chosen country or nation, a followers of the law of Moses, and the regular worshipers of the temple. Maaring ganun ang iniisip nila. But then, they start reading chapter 2, verse 1, which is our text na binasa po ni Elder Charlie kanina, na kung saan ay mababasa nila sa verse 1, Therefore, you have no excuse, O man, every one of you who judges, For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourselves because you, the judge, practice the very same thing. Sino po yung tinutukoy dito ni Pablo sa sinabi niyang, O man, he is referring to him, the Jew, who do the same ungodly things that Gentiles do. Kaya sinabi ni Paul sa ibang mga pagkakataon that everyone's whether you are Jews or Gentiles will be judged by God according to their works. In this first verse, si Paul dinil na itong dalawang question na ating pong nabanggit kanina. And God sent unbelieving to hell and also about the Christians being judgmental. Yung two questions na nabanggit po natin. So, ang imimeditate po natin sa umagang ito, which is nasa bulletin niyo po, each one according to his works na may two headings po. Una po, to everyone who does evil, at yung pangalawa, to everyone who does good. Sa so, una pong puntos ng ating pagbubulayan, each one according to his work, to everyone who does evil. Kung maalala po natin yung last three verses of Romans chapter 1, from last Lord's Day sermon delivery ni Elder Charlie, Paul lists all kinds of evil deeds that unbelieving Gentiles do. Sinulit niya sa Romans chapter 1 verse 29, to 31, at sinabi po doon, they were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, 
covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, stripes, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. And the list is in chapter 1. At ngayon naman po sa chapter 2, Paul follows his condemnation doon sa mga Gentiles with a rebuke naman with his fellow Jews. Inatulan ng mga Hudyo ang mga Gentiles because of their ungodly works. Ngunit, sila mismo do the very same thing. At kung ganun po, sino po yung unang pumapasok sa isip natin in this kind of rebuke? It is, in fact, Jesus Christ himself na kung saan nirebuke niya ang mga Jews, in particular, yung mga Pharisees at mga, mga scribes dahil sa kanila pong hypocrisy. Doon sa Mark chapter 7, verse 9 to 3, sinabi niya doon, And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whatever reviles who, and whoever reviles father and mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you, whatever you have gained from me is korban, that is given to God. Then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father and mother. Thus, making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things you do. Biruhin niyo po, dahil sa tradisyon, kagaya ng korban, they are making void yung commandment number five. Honor your father and mother. Kaya nga ang ating Panginoong Isus condemned the Pharisees who have a traditions which allow them to give offerings to the temple even to the neglect of their elderly parents. Doon po sa Matthew 23 to 34. Ang ating Panginoon again kinundem itong mga Pharisees for building or yung decorating yung tomb ng mga prophets while Yung kanilang mga ancestors naman ay pinapatay itong mga prophets. Jesus also prophesied that he and his disciples, even yung mga prophet, would be persecuted and be killed by the same Jews. Sinabi ng ating Panginoon nga dun sa Matthew 23 verse 34, sabi niya, Therefore I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify. And some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town. Kung ang ating Panginoong Jesus po ay hinatula ng mga scribe at ang mga Pharisees for their evil deeds, bakit po kaya si Paul nirebuke niya sila for them being judgmental or judging others dun sa verse 3 ng chapter 2? Sabi po kasi doon ni Paul, Do you not suppose, or do you suppose, O oh man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourselves, that you will escape the judgment of God? Dahil hindi nila ginagawa ang kanilang mga itinuturo, ito ay isang tanda ng hypocrisy. This is why Jesus taught doon sa Sermon of the Mount, doon sa Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Sabi po doon ng ating Panginoon, Judge not that you be not judged. At upang bigyan din ng ating Panginoon yung kanyang pagpapahayag, He gives an overstatement, not a literal command. Sabi ng Panginoon sa Matthew chapter 7, verse 5, You hypocrite, first, Take the log out of your eyes and then you will see clearly to take the specks out of the, your brother's eye. If we believe that we are better than others, then hypocrisy takes over. 
And we often do not see our faults and sins dahil sa ating pang mga pride. So, we only see others' faults and sin. Ito ang isa sa mga dahilan kung bakit itong musikero na si Martin Sampson rejected the Christian faith. He concluded that all unbelievers also say, maging ang unbeliever daw sinasabi, and then I quote, the church is full of hypocrisy. Sinasabi din daw naman pala yan ng mga unbelievers. So, totoo pa talaga po ito, that the church is full of hypocrisy. The true church, or the true Christian church, na kung saan nagpo-propess to be a saints ng ating Panginoong Isa Kristo and acknowledge yung kanilang mga kasalanan is totally different matter doon sa tinatawag na hypocrisy. Kahit na siya ay patuloy na nagkakagawa ng mga kasalanan, he repent and turn back to God stronger in the faith because of his repentance. How can it be na matatawag po nating hypocrite when he or she admits being a sinner that he or she he is according to the word of God samantalang yung mga unbeliever naman po or mga professing believers who do not attend church at marami pong ganito tinitingnan nila ang simbahan ang mga kristyanong ito makasalanan and then conclude that the church is full of hypocrites aba malayo po sila sa katotohanan dahil there is no 100% perfect true church all throughout po ng biblical history there has never been a perfect church the church will always have false professors yung mga hypocrites among true believers. And true believers will continue to sin until Christ return to make the church perfect. Let it sink in po sa ating mga isipan at puso. Yung binasa po kanina ni Elder Charlie na medyo mahaba at sabay-sabay po nating binigkas na ating confession of faith. Yung article chapter 29 dun sa Belgic Confession na kung saan nagde-describe na ang mga kristyano as saints and at the same time ay mga sinner. Ito ay isang uh, katotohanan na makikita natin all throughout the scripture. Maging yung mga heroes of faith po natin. They continue to fail and sin even as they are faithful believers. Tama po? Kagaya halimbawa nila Abraham, nila Moses, ni David, even yung mga apostles ni Jesus Christ, alam natin po ito sa ating mga sariliti. These saint sinners are not hypocrites. Tama po? They are not hypocrites. In fact, it is the world outside po ng simbahan that is full of hypocrites in self-delusion they present themselves before others and before God that they are basically good people sa isang naganap na survey dun sa few research o PEW research survey dun sa Amerika 65% po ng lahat ng mga respondent agreed that most people are basically good Disagreeing with God's word that condemns all mankind as worthless and wicked. Tulad ng sinabi dun sa Romans chapter 3 verse 10 and I think you're familiar kayo dito. Sabi po dun, As it is written, none is righteous. No, no, not one. At dun sa verse 23, sinabi rin, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Itong, tat, uh, itong uh, mga talatang ito ng Romans chapter 3 verse 10 to 23 na kung saan 65% na sumagot dun sa survey ay nagdi-disagree sa katotohanan na ito that no one is righteous, no not one. Biri mo sasabihin pa nilang 65% people are basically good. 
Ngayon, balikan po natin yung tanong kanina. Is the church full of hypocrites? By no means. There may be a handful, but many of those who have made profession of faith or worship regularly are sinners. That's true. Who have been justified and declared righteous saints by our holy God, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And they show it in their public and private lives. Kung kaya nga, ang, akos, ang akusasyon na the church is full of hypocrites is often merely an excuse. Excuse lamang nila for not attending or even joining the church. However, are we to refrain judging others in all cases? Dapat ba nating wag na lang maging o magusga? In fact, Paul did not prohibit us from forming an opinion about someone or something. Or not, he's not even saying that we should wink o yung kumindat na lang at uh, isang tabi o in a blink of an eye towards yung isang kapatid o isang tao na nagkakasala or in error or is sweep under the rug na lang. In Jesus' earthly ministry, he often called out yung mga Pharisees and the scribes for their self-righteous error. Maging yung mga apostles themselves often named name of those who were in the church na kung saan sino yung mga bulaang buro who were committed in public sin or committing public sin. Kaya kung hindi ipinagbabawal ng ating Panginoong Isus maging si Paul ang mga ganitong uri ng paghatol, what then are they prohibiting? Ano nga ba yung pinagbabawal nila? Ang unang dahilan, we may not judge too harshly or too rashly. Sa maraming pagkakataon ng mga kadalasan ay nakikita natin ang pagkakamali at mga pagsasa o pagkakasala na kung saan may iba't ibang sitwasyon o yung tinatawag na extenuating circumstances. Kadalasan, when we see that, we judge based on second-hand or third-hand information So we don't even know yung real facts. And we judge. Madalas din tayong naghusga based on our preconceived opinion. Or usually negative yung opinion natin of the person. Minsan naman ang ating paghusga is born out of a disagreement with, with others na kung saan uh, may grudges tayo dun sa taong yon. At sa ibang pagkakataon naman, nahug nang husga tayo harshly or rashly because of self-desire to hurt or to get even sa isang tao. Ang pangalawang dahilan po ng pagbabawal, Paul warns us against judging based on our own opinion o yung ating standards. Ang standards natin dapat must be the truth According dun po sa verse 8, chapter 2 na text natin, nakasulat po doon, But for those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. At ano po ang katotohanan ito na binanggit ni Paul? It is all the scripture. When Jesus speaks, He always speaks the truth dahil siya po ay Diyos. And God is truth. Ang scripture po ay perfect, inerrant, infallible because God is perfect. The Pharisees made their own laws. O yung mga scribe based dun sa kanilang mga preference, based sa kanilang opinion, based sa kanilang tradition. So they were condemned by Jesus in every way or every turn ng kanilang uh, discourse and argument. Kung ganun po, what should be our standards? Ano po yung batayan ng ating uh, standard? O yung... It must only be God's holy authoritative word. 
nothing else. Ulitin ko po, ang ating standard must be God's holy and authoritative word. Nothing else. So, kapag dumating ang panong that we Christians condemn abortion, it is based on the biblical command not to murder. Right? If we condemn LGBTQ+, it is based on the biblical command not to commit sexual immorality and not to have unnatural sexual relationship. If we condemn socialism and communism, it is based on the biblical command not to steal what is not ours. If we condemn racism, it is based on the biblical truth that God's chosen nation is made up of believers from all nations, from all tribes, from all languages of the world. Yun po ang ating standards. Batay po sa Biblia. So, paano naman po ang judgment na mangyayari sa mga hindi mananampalataya? Who thinks they are basically good? Did just no? Did judgment? Itong pag-uusga pong ito will be God's eternal wrath and fury. Kagaya ng binasa natin text kanila. Every unbeliever who does evil will suffer tribulation and distress in eternal punishment. Dahil ipinapalagay nila na ang Diyos is so loving, so gracious, merciful, very kind, and very patient, and that He will not send anyone to hell. Yun yung kanilang perception. Sa ganong klase ng paniniwala, sila po ay lubos na nagkakamali sa kanilang pagpapalagay. For the scriptures are full of warnings about the torment of eternal hell. In fact, hindi nila nakita that God's kindness and patience towards them are meant to lead them into repentance and faith. At ito pong dahilan kung bakit sinimulan ni Jesus ang kanyang pangangaral with urgency o yung urgent word dun sa Mark chapter 1 verse 15. Sabi po niya, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Kung kaya, yung writers ng Hebrew, sinabi niya rin sa chapter 9, verse 27, And just as it is appointed for a man to die once, at matapos na and after this, judgment. Matapos po ang buhay natin dito sa mundo, there is no second chance. There are no second chances. Whether you are Jews or a Gentile. Sabi yun sa Romans Chapter 2, verse 9. There will be tribulation and distress for every human being who does evil, the Jew first, and also the Greek. Yan po ang kahinat na ng sino mang gumagawa ng mga evil deeds. Pero paano naman po yung gumagawa ng good deeds? That leads us dun po sa ating second point. Each one according to his works, to everyone who does good. Ang ating Panginoong si Kristo, together with Paul's at, uh, ni Paul at uh, yung mga apostles niya, have a sober warning against all who do evil. It is a matter of eternal life in heaven or a matter of eternal torment in hell. So, paano naman po yung mga everyone who does good? Sabi ni Paul dun sa chapter 2 ng Romans, verse 7, To those who by patience, in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, He will give eternal life. Kung kaya nga, we must be patient. We must persevere through life of fame, of pain, life of full of suffering and even persecution sa buhay po natin. 
lot of circumstances on a daily basis. Kung paano si Jesus at ang lahat ng mga apostles po niya were persecuted, all Christians will be persecuted on one way or another, whether it's small or big kind of persecution. We will be persecuted. And those who persevere to the end will receive glory and honor and peace and immortality. Pangako po yan ng Panginoon. At ang ibig sabihin po nun, eternal life in our indescribable heavenly dwelling place. Ito po ang pinangako ng ating Panginoong Sukrus. Doon sa Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 to 12, sabi po niya, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Kaya nga sinabi ni Pablo that God will render to each according to his works. Doon sa mga gumagawa ng masasama, He will pour out His righteous wrath. At doon naman po sa gumagawa ng mga mabubuti, He will reward with eternal blessings sa presensya niya doon sa kalangitan. Ngunit maaari po natin may tanong, Ito ba ay sumasalungat sa mga katuroan niya that our good works, our obedience to God's commandment can never be the basis of our salvation? Hindi ba sinabi niya dun sa Ephesians chapter 2 which is si Paul din na nagsulat sa verse 8 and 9 For by grace you have been saved through faith and not and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. At gayon din, sinabi niya sa Romans chapter 3, verse 20, For by works of the law, no human, no human being will be justified in his sight. So sa mga katagang po ito, what then can we make of this? Ano po yung masasabi natin dito? Is Paul contradicting himself? No, he is not contradicting himself. Dahil ang mga sulat niya ay inspired by God, the Holy Spirit, at ang ating Panginoon ay perfect. Kaya naman, when we read those texts, we must harmonize. Ano man ang mababasa natin sa banal na kasulatan, in all of the New Testament, we read that good works follow salvation not the ground of salvation Uli tingko po the good works follow salvation not the ground of salvation Maging dun kay Isaiah o si Isaiah mismo na isulat niya dun sa Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 ang sabi po niya dun that our good works are as unclean Fill the rags like a polluted garment in the sight of God. At ang ating Panginoong Jesus mismo equates yung mga believers to a good tree that bear much fruit. Maging si Pablo ay sinabi niya doon that our good works are all fruit of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 22 to 24. Kaya naman, Gaano man karaming ating mga mabubuting gawa, we cannot be saved from God's wrath by doing them. Bakit po? Dahil ang lahat ng tao ay pinanganak na may likas na makasalanan, so no one can ever be perfect and sinless at ang isang kasalanan man lang in words, in thoughts, in deeds, that deserves condemnation to hell already. Maging si Adam at sila Eve found this out the hard way and too late when they commit 
one sin. Mababasa natin sa Romans 5 chapter uh, verse 12 to 21. Ito pong istorya, bagamat mahaba siya, patungkol ito kay Adam at ang lahat ng descendants are condemned to death because he violated God's one command in the Garden of Eden. All human beings are then born sinners because of Adam's, Adam's one act of disobedience. Ngunit, mga minamahal ko kay Kristo dito sa CCRC, Sinabi ni Paul naman doon sa Romans chapter 7, verse 24 to 25. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Ang sagot po nandun sa verse 25. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ang ating Panginoong Isokristo lang ang tanging tao na namuhay, naganap, na matuwid at walang kasalanan. Mababasa po natin yan sa Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, Hebrews 9, 28. At ang ating Panginoon, He offered Himself or His perfect body and blood bilang sakripisyo for all the sins ng lahat ng mga hinirang niya. And that includes you and me, who believes and trust Him, God blesses you and me with glory and honor and eternal life only through faith in Christ alone. Because when we do, our sins are forgiven and God transfers all our sins to His Son doon po sa krus ng Kalbaryo and counts Christ's perfect sinless life as yours and mine. Therefore, ito pong pananampalataya at paghingi ng tawad. God moves you from condemnation of eternal hell to a blessing of eternal life. Mga minamahal kong CCRC family, mga yung maging friends at mga guests, you have this assurance God's word never fails. His promise are righteous and trustworthy. But be warned. You who do not believe and you who pretend to believe, God's words or God's word is also true for you as well. Ang kanyang nakakatakot at nakamamatay na warning against you will be fulfilled on Judgment Day. Therefore, Repent and believe for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. Muli po, samahan niyo po akong manalangin sa ating Panginoon. Heavenly Father, give us strength to live out the message we have heard today by the power of your Spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the warning about the torment of eternal hell to those who do evil, and at the same time, blessings of eternal life to those who do good, not because we are good in of ourselves, but only through the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you for your loving kindness and patience towards us, who hear your word with a sober warning that are meant to lead us into repentance and faith. So help us now, O Lord, to obey your word and live a righteous and godly life through the works of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And help us to remain steadfast and to be patient and persevere in our faith through all challenges saming buhay. Even in our suffering and difficulties, help us, O oh Lord, to persevere and help us to trust you as you forgave us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.